Welcome to a series on Unreal 5. In this video, I'm going to discuss event-driven architecture. Many video games are incredibly complex. They have lots of different things going on, and as we've now learned, may interact with lots of different systems. To help reduce this complexity during development, Unreal uses events. Events happen when things happen. A player might press a button, a message might arrive on the network, or different things might happen internally within Unreal we can respond to. So we write code when events happen. The most common event, one we will see fairly often, is called begin play. Begin play happens either when a actor is created and first runs, when it's play begins, or if it is already created and part of an existing collection, when that runs as part of a collection. So when play begins for that actor, its code will then run. Put another way, when the event happens, our code runs. So if we're looking at how we write code and think about the building blocks of our games within Unreal, we often find we move left to right. An event starts, and then our code runs. And this will make a little more sense when we look at blueprints as a visual scripting language, but at least for right now, understand that we move left to right, an event happens, our code runs. So if we're looking at responding to begin play, when play begins, we can often also respond when play ends, in play. Notice that we're building top to bottom and left to right our listing of events and then our code moving off the event left to right. We can also arrange things, as we'll see when we work in blueprints, in whatever order we want vertically, but we will always be moving, responding to events. So we have begin play and we have end play. The beginning of whenever the play happens and the end whenever the play ends. In between these two events is an important third event called tick. Internally, Unreal keeps track of the frames per second. For most actors, that is tied to the internal tick of the actor. Think of a clock, tick, 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 ever moving forward as part of a cycle within the clock itself. In this case, in Unreal, tick will always be run for that actor. However, we can also dictate when ticks run for actors. So the tick will always run more times than begin play and end play, but it might not always run on frames per second. And we'll talk about in a later video why we might want to change some things or slow it down or speed it up. But at least for right now, we understand when play begins, begin play. When play ends, end play. In between those will be a kind of steady tick that we can then respond to. Notice in each of these cases, of course, we're moving left to right. So to review what I've been talking about, begin play will always be first, end play will always be last, tick will happen many times, generally once per frame, so frames per second is something we'll talk about when we get into that. The foundation of our games, though, its architecture and hence the need for this video, is to get us to thinking about events when things happen, when play begins, when play ends, when the tick happens, or, as we'll talk about, input happening, when the player presses a certain button, or when the player presses a certain button combination, we can respond to it. And this will be incredibly important as we understand our architecture, the foundation of our games, as part of this event flow. In fact, in the next video in sequence, we'll talk about blueprints and continue to think about this left to right flow of events into code. But at least for this video, we're just getting used to thinking about events themselves as part of Unreal 5. Thanks for watching.